Welcome back. This is the second video in which we're doing a deep dive into how to use our programming to create Quarto documents. This allows you to weave together content and executable code to produce outputs like Word documents, PDFs, web pages, dashboards, etc. Very exciting stuff. In this video, we're talking about chunk options, how to control what happens to your code. Does the code get shown? Does it just run? Does it not run at all? Etc. Etc. So let's dive right in. On this YouTube channel, we're creating our programming videos on everything. In this series of videos, you're gonna learn how to produce outputs like the one you're seeing on the screen at the moment, but also these lovely interactive dashboards that are absolutely amazing, and even academic style PDFs that have references and citations, etc., etc. And everything in these lessons are available on these HTML documents that I've created. And of course, I'm gonna give you access to these. There'll be a link on the screen at the end of the video you can click on. Let's dive into our studio. So this is the Quarto document that I used to create this page. Here at the top is the YAML. We're gonna talk more about that in the next video. Here here is the first narrative element. It's just a little bit of text. And here is the first chunk of code. And here we see I've called the tidyverse package. And you'll notice that in the output, the output includes both the line of code that we wrote and all of this jibber jabber, the warnings and all of the sort of nuts and bolts about the package, etc., etc. We don't necessarily want that in our document. So here's our chunk of code. Right, only code we've got here is library tidyverse. But these above it, these are all the chunk options, right? This tells R what to do with this chunk of code. These values here are basically, these are the usual default values. So if you didn't put that, these, these chunk options in, it would default to these anyway. And let me just talk you through what's happening here. Here we've got error warning messages equals true. In other words, those things are gonna pop up in the rendered document right there. Echo equals true, that means that the code itself is gonna appear in your document. Sometimes you might want that very often, and I think most of the time you don't want that. So in this case, if I changed all of this to false, it would run this line of code, but none of it would appear in the rendered document at the end of the day. Now let's have a look at the different ways in which you can include chunk options. The first in the actual chunk header. So here we've got that chunk header is echo equals false, and it will not show this code in uh, in your rendered document. The second, and this is really my preference, is that you put it underneath the header with a hashtag and a, and, and a vertical line and then echo colon false. Uh, the reason I prefer this is because you may have multiple chunk options and we'll have a look at that in just a second and it becomes very neat and easy to see what it is that you're doing. The third thing you can do is you can include a chunk option instruction in the YAML at the very top of your document. Now, if you put something in the YAML at the top, it will apply to all of your chunks, unless you've put a contradictory in, uh, instruction in one of your chunks itself, which will override the YAML. And there's a fourth way that you can include chunk options, and that is when you're creating a project, you can actually have a YAML document. We're gonna talk about that in the next video, and well, in one of the videos, and that will apply to all of your documents. And then again, if you have, you can overwrite that instruction, individual documents if you want. Now there are many, many chunk options. I'm gonna walk you through a couple of the ones that I find more useful, but in this document that you'll have access to, if you click on the link at the end of the video, um, I've got all sorts of information in here about the default values for many, many chunk options that you can look at, so that's useful. Uh, if you've got code that you do not want to run at all, you might wanna show it on the screen, but not run or execute, you could change the default value is true, you could change eval to false and it won't run the code, but it could show it if you wanted it to. Echo equals true, that's also the default value. If you change that to false, it's not gonna run the code at all. Um, the warnings and errors, I usually just make sure that these are set, they don't default to false. I would make them false because you don't want that stuff in your code usually, uh, in your rendered document. This is useful stuff. When you insert a plot or a figure, you've got lots of control with these chunk options, right? In terms of the captions, uh, the size, uh, whether it's centered, where it's aligned to, et cetera, et cetera. So very, very useful. This document that you're looking at at the moment, I think you'll find useful if you click on the screen uh, on the link that's available right now, you can, you'll be able to access this. I hope that was useful. In the next video, we're gonna talk about narrative elements, which is, you know, how to create hyperlinks, et cetera, et cetera, inside your narrative text.